Hey guys, Jeremy here, aka Mr. W from Forms. Here to do a video for you on how to discharge a monitor so that you can work on the monitor chassis. Um, all you really need to do this is a regular flathead screwdriver, it's what I use. And I use a length of wire stripped at both ends. You can see right here, it's just stripped at both ends a good amount. Um, what some people like to use is a wire with alligator clips on it. I'm going to show you why I don't like this. It's got, I got one right here to show you. And so I got one end stripped. I'm going to wrap this around the screwdriver so it's nice and snug in there. And then you would take the other end and you would clip it somewhere on the monitor frame. I mean, you could clip it like pretty much anywhere on the monitor frame to be safe. The reason I don't like this is because if you have a lot of play and you're working in there, it's a potential that it can just slide off, and it's happened to me before. That's why I don't like using that. So, I'll wait with you. Like I said, I just like using a length of wire stripped on both ends. So I'm going to take one end. I'm just going to wrap this wire around the screwdriver. And I'm going to take the other end. I'm going to, if you look at the frame, you're going to see some holes on the frame usually. If you don't have holes in your frame, just strip a lot more off and then just wrap it around. But I use the holes in the frame and I'll stick the other end through there and I'll wrap it around so it's making good contact. It's good and solid there. Now, what you're looking for to discharge is up here. This is the anode cap and you got the suction cup thing covering the anode. That's what we're going to discharge. So what you want to do to this charge is we got our tool all set already here. I'm going to come in through the side to show you. Normally you'd want to just come through here so you don't have a chance of touching the frame because you don't want to touch the frame when you're discharging or you're basically discharging into yourself if you do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one hand and put it down to the side so you're not touching anything. Then you're going to just slide this under that suction cup and without touching the frame you're going to touch the, the metal part of the anode there. You might hear it pop. This one didn't pop because this monitor hasn't been used in a long time, so it has no charge. So that, there you are. That would be discharged then. Some people wait a minute and then go back and discharge it again. I've never had to do that. So let's go back in here. You're going to pick up your suction cup here. When you look under there, you'll be able to see the two pins that are holding the, the, the anode into there, into the back of the monitor. Just kind of slide one of the pins over and it'll pop out, and then you can just slide the other one out. And now that's done. All right. Now, forgot to mention, you want to keep the power disconnected and make sure your, your, your machine is unplugged before you do this. You don't want to take any chance that the machine has power. All right, so that's done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, take this monitor chassis out. So we can disconnect all the wires that are going to it still. I've already disconnected my uh, remote board which is underneath the control panel so I don't worry about that. We got our video connector on this side. Disconnected that. This has your red, green, blue video ground and your sink in there. Um, we can slowly disconnect this neck board, just wiggle it back and forth and it'll pop off. If the monitor's never been worked on before, you'll have some silicone here. You might have to cut it or it might be it might be able to wiggle it off. But it's okay if you have to cut it. That's fine. It's just it's just there to make sure it doesn't work loose during regular movement and such. Um, these are also going to have a dag wire that goes from the ground strap around the monitor to the neck board. This one's already been cut before so I have a wire cap on here. I can just disconnect that and the DAG wire is disconnected. You may, if you're working on a monitor for the first time, you will probably have to cut that DAG wire. It's usually a solid wire from the um, from the ground strap there. You usually just cut it in the middle, and then when you put the monitor back in, it'll strip both ends of it, splice it together, put a wire cap on it. So next time, you'll just have to disconnect the wire cap. So also, we can go ahead and, and remove the screws that are holding this down now. Every monitor manufacturer, every model, model of monitor is mounted slightly different. Um, this one just has two screws here and then there's a bracket that it slides into in the back. 
So all I have to do is disconnect these two, these two screws here. This one happens to have the, the remote board wires attached to it. And then I have one right over here too. Remove that, I'm gonna keep that screw, put it off to the side so I don't lose it. Now, you'll be able to start sliding this out, but you're gonna, you're gonna find that there are a couple of cables that you still have to disconnect. I'm gonna move this over so you can see. All right, I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So right here, this is the connector to the DGAS cable that's built into the monitor. You'll have to disconnect that. It's a two pin connector. So just work it back and forth a little bit and it disconnects. Now you can't plug that in backwards when you put it back in, so don't worry about potentially plugging it backwards when you put the chassis back in. So also have, and I'll zoom back out to show you this better, these wires here that are connected to the tube, this is your yoke. It's connected to the yoke up here. These are your yoke wires and there's a connector on the board which is going to be real hard for me to show you until I disconnect it on the back here. It's going to be in different positions depending on the monitor, but it's going to be a four pin connector. And so I'm just going to wiggle this loose. Get a good angle on it. All right, so there you have it. That's your yoke connector. This one just happens to be keyed, so you will not be able to plug it in backwards. Some of the older monitors, they're not keyed. You'll be able to plug it in backwards, so take note. What I like to do when I'm working on a monitor for the first time is I take my digital camera, I take pictures of every connector I disconnect and what orientation they are, so that when I go to plug them back in later, I don't plug them in wrong. So we'll set that off to the side. Now this basically will slide right out. And there you have it. It's, we've removed the chassis. Now, like I said, that's all there is to it. You just work on your chassis, put it back in, the reverse order that you took it out. And then you'll just have to put the anode cap back up there and you're good to go. Um, if you have any questions about anything, you know, just let me know on the forums and uh, I'll try to answer them. I hope that was helpful for you. Appreciate it.